Good evening. On behalf of Cameron and Heather and their families, welcome to each of you. We're gathered tonight to celebrate the wedding of Cameron Jones and Heather Douglas as husband and wife. This we do in the context of Christian values and Christian worship. Therefore, we will pray and we will look at the wisdom of Holy Scripture about marriage. So I invite you to bow with me as we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we gather as family and friends on this special occasion to participate in the wedding of Cameron and Heather. We thank you for the gift of life and for the way you have designed it. We are especially grateful that right in the middle of life you have given us the relationships of love, of marriage, and of family. We thank you for Cameron and Heather and seek your special blessing upon them and this celebration. We pray for your guidance and direction upon them as they begin their journey together as husband and wife. We pray that this ceremony will serve to remind those of us already married of our sacred commitment to our spouses. We also pray that those who are yet to be married will be reminded of the sacred and solemn vows involved in getting married. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Cameron and Heather, the Bible provides us with some clear teachings from God about marriage. So I invite you to listen to a few biblical passages. From the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, the Lord says, so God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. In the same book of Genesis, the Bible goes on to say, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Marriage then, as God has designed it, is something old. It did not result from some moral failure on the part of sinful humankind, but it came right out of God's original and perfect plan for us. It is the oldest of all institutions, and it's here to stay. It remains alive and well. It is more than just a social arrangement. It is a sacred union. Marriage is as old as the human race, and is designed to be good to all adults, younger and older, for as long as we live. The psalmist reminds us, for example, with a twinkle in his eye, that in old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap. <laughs> God created us male and female so that we could complement each other physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Quite literally, man and woman were made for each other to be drawn together and to become one in the bonds of love. The nature of that love is clearly stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The Apostle Paul describes it by saying, Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Therefore, by staying in close fellowship with the God of love, His endless love is ours to express toward each other and toward Him. In addition, marriage as God designed it is something new. As the scripture says, the two shall become one. Someone has observed that marriage is like a three ring surface. One ring represents the husband. One ring represents the wife. 
and the middle and largest ring represents their relationship, their marriage. Their marriage is the something new. God empowers a marital relationship to express in a continuing way the affectional and loving needs of each person for the rest of their lives. This something new becomes more important than either of the two who created it. The goal of this new relationship is not to replace or duplicate the experiences of the past, but to become a new and loving addition to each other and to each other's family. You will do this best by keeping the priorities of your love relationships in proper order. First, you will love God with all your hearts. Second, you will love and care for each other above all other earthly relationships. And third, you will love deeply your blended family and will allow each member to love and cherish you. Marriage as God designed it in the third place is something best served by mutual submission. It is a cooperative venture between two persons of equal worth and dignity. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians outlines very clearly the responsibilities husbands and wives have to, have to each other. He introduces this beautiful passage by admonishing, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. In the biblical story of creation, woman did not come from man's head to be his master, nor from his foot to be his slave. Rather, she came from under his arm to be protected by him and near his heart to be loved by him. She came from his side to be his partner. Therefore, marriage must be entered into with mutual love, mutual commitment, and mutual submission. I want to take a moment of personal privilege. I am leaving my prepared script to share with you about Lisa and David. As my wife and I were in our room today, relaxing, we heard a knock on the door. We opened the door, and one of the housekeepers was there asking if she could come in and clean our room. We were delighted that she wanted to do that. We invited her in, and I began to tell her why we were here, and I told her that I was going to perform the wedding ceremony for my grandson tonight. And she was excited about that. And then I said, what do you suggest I tell them? And she just broke out in a laugh. Now, I don't know whether she laughed because she thought, you're the minister and you're asking me about what they should do for marriage. Or did she laugh because nobody had ever asked a maid about marriage? I'm not sure why she laughed, but interestingly, she had something to say. And uh, she said, you know, experience is the best teacher. You have good experiences, you have a good marriage. And then I said, well, what if the experiences are not good? And she said, you learn from bad experiences. Wasn't long after that, we called a cab. And uh, the cab driver was David and um, told David why we were here. So I was going to marry my grandson tonight. And he was excited about that, and I said, what, what should I tell him? And he laughed. <laughs> Perhaps it was for the same reason. Maybe he thought, you, minister, asking me what they ought to do about marriage. Maybe he was saying, you know, cab drivers don't get those kind of questions. I'm not sure why he laughed, but he did have something to say. And he said to me, tell them that the wedding is just the beginning, it's not the end. That's pretty profound. And then he said, take marriage one step at a time. Gosh, I wish I'd written that. And then he said, you got to learn to give and take. Well, we can close now and get the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But let me get back to the script. That's what I'm waiting for. 
uh, Cameron, would you have Heather to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy state of marriage? Would you love, honor, and keep him in sick, keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep you only unto her, so long as you both shall live? Heather, would you have Cameron to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy state of marriage? Will you love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep you only unto him, so long as you both shall live? Who gives this woman to be married to this man? circular and therefore never ending. It symbolizes the never ending relationship in marriage. The untarnishable material from whence it is constructed is a token of the pure and abiding qualities of an ideal marriage. <clears throat> Cameron, did you give this ring to Heather as a token of your love and commitment to her? Heather, would you wear this ring as a token of his love for you, and would you wear it as a token of your love and commitment to him? Now I can see right now I'm going to have to help you kiss her later. <laughs> Token of your love and commitment to him. Carolyn, would you wear this ring as a token of her love for you? And would you wear it as a token of your love and commitment to her? Place this on his ring. Now, if you will turn and face me and join right hands, which may seem strange, right to right. <laughs> <laughs> Three degrees from the University of Texas. <laughs> having pledged your faith in and love to each other, and having sealed your marital vows by giving and receiving the rings, acting in the authority vested in me as the minister of Jesus Christ, and looking to heaven for divine sanction, I do hereby pronounce you husband and wife, in the presence of Almighty God and these assembled witnesses. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one put asunder. And these words from the book of Ruth out of the Bible can serve you well by reminding you of your sacred vows to each other. I quote, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. 
where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you from me. Would you bow with me as we pray? <clears throat> our loving and gracious God, our hearts have jumped with joy as we have witnessed the promise of marriage Cameron and Heather have made to you and to each other tonight. We are indeed happy for them. While the path they have chosen together will not be an easy one, we trust it will be your path for them and comes with the gift of yourself and all of the resources you have to give them. May they seek you and your will each day. We pray they will learn early and experience often your love and grace in their individual lives and in their relationship with each other. May kind thoughts and words and deeds proceed from each toward the other when moments of anger and conflict beset them. And may the quality of their love for each other become more and more like the love you have for them. We pray they will learn and practice early in their marriage the art of give and take, that they will spend time and energy nurturing their relationship, and that they will give priority to the common goals and interests they share. Bless the families from which they have come and bind their lives together for your glory. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Brock.